Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at how to use raw SQL in a Rails application in a way that won't make you want to scream. Now generally you can pretty much avoid this using just regular active record queries, however sometimes you run into a situation like this one where maybe you want to uh, order all of your posts and your comments for like a, a feed, maybe like a, you think of something like a Twitter feed or a Facebook feed or something. Uh, and you have like multiple different models, you wanna order them by multiple different uh, attributes that they might have. So in this case, we're ordering them by the created at. So you can see here it's going from 12 to 12.30 to one to two to 2.30, right? But if they have the same uh, you know, time, we then order it by the content itself where you can see it's ordered alphabetically. So if you have a situation like this, you're probably not gonna be able to get away with uh, like active record unions or whatever, because I don't think unions exist out of the box. You can of course go and uh, create your own active record helper method or something that lets you do a union, um, but that's gonna be pretty involved. Sometimes you just run into a situation where you just need to use SQL, uh, either for business reasons or personal reasons. Maybe you, you know, like your mental health and you just wanna get over it, uh, in which case it's probably better to just use SQL. In this case, uh, we'll be taking a look at how we can do this uh, in a way that's not super painful and make it a bit easier to work with in the front end. To get started, we're gonna go ahead and do a Rails new video and we'll do a dash D for PostgreSQL, just so that we have uh, PSQL in here. Then we'll CD into the video and run a code dot to open it up in VS Code. Now, the general idea here is gonna be uh, a little bit sloppy because I'm gonna be doing it all inside of like the controller. Uh, you'd probably wanna create like a service object or something if you wanted to uh, set up something similar to this, maybe do some scopes. I don't know, I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. Uh, but I always get a comment from someone that's like, oh, this could be cleaner code. And it's like, yeah, that's that's not the point of the video, though. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and do a uh, couple scaffold generators here just so that we have something to work with. We'll start with a uh, scaffold for the post where we have the title and the content of type text. I'll get rid of that last bit because ChatGPT didn't generate what I asked it to. Uh, we can then do a second one where we do a generate for scaffold for comments where we have a post ID and a content of type text. Now, the first thing you'll probably notice here, if you've done something like this before, is our uh, our fields don't necessarily match. So when we come over here uh, to display all of these, we're gonna run into a little bit of an issue uh, because like our, our comments don't have a title as well. They also, neither one has a record type. So that's the first thing you probably wanna pick up on. Uh, next, I'm gonna do a Rails DB colon drop because I probably already have one. And then we can do a DB colon, oops. Uh, we can do a DB colon create and a DB colon migrate something like that. So that should hopefully set that up for us. And then we can come over to our model. So we'll come over to, well, let's start in our routes. We just want to real quick create a route to a uh, pages controller and a home action. And let's go ahead and let's generate that. We'll do a Rails G controller pages and home just so we have something to mess around with. Now let's come over to our app, our models and our post.rb. Now, of course, we already told it that the comment has a post ID. So that means we're gonna have as many comments on the post and in the comment itself, this needs to now belong to, oops, belong to a post. And if we ever delete a post, because these are dependent destroy, it'll also delete the comments associated with them. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, so now that we have all of that out of the way, we can actually focus on the stuff we care about. Uh, to do that, we're gonna have to create some seed data. So we're just gonna come over into our seeds file and I'm going to copy some seed data over. Uh, it's, it seems like a lot, but it's mostly just manually copy pastaing stuff. So I'll have a link to this in the video description. Basically, we just clear the database if we have anything in there for some reason, we create the seed data where we just give them the basic info you just saw with the created app uh, being different and the uh, content being different for the post and the comment so that we have a way to sort these in a way that we can very quickly see which one should come first. For the times, we just change the last two sections uh, for the minutes and the seconds. And yeah, pretty simple stuff there as well. If we now run a Rails DB colon seed command, that should add that into our database. And we can now run a Rails S and come over to localhost port 3000, and we'll just see a blank page. Uh, I think I forgot to save the seed file. So let me go ahead and do a Rails DB colon seed real quick. And then we can do a Rails S. Okay, so now let's come over to, let me close this. We can come over to our controllers and our pages controller. In our pages controller, what we'd like to do is have something that does like a uh, at posts and comments, right? And the issue with this is 
To some extent, what we kind of want to do, and I, this is where I had chat GPT generate something, uh, is something similar to this line right here, where we have a uh, post.select for the title, the content that created at, and the post as a record type, because that gives us those fields that we had over here. And we want to call a union where we do a comment that joins the post, select the comments.content, the created at, and the record type. The issue with this is, uh, among other things, if we refresh this, you'll see that active record doesn't have a union type. And you can come over here and you can do like active record union and search for this. And you'll see that there's a bunch of links here uh, and some of it's really helpful. Uh, the issue is uh, it, it can get pretty involved with how you uh, how you set this up to make sure it works properly. And you can always scroll to the bottom and copy and paste what you need to. Uh, but of course, not everything's going to be as as like, uh, I don't know, well explained as a union operator. Sometimes you'll have other stuff where you just uh, you, you need to build it manually, in which case you might want to use some SQL. Uh, you also need the, the order for the created at here just to make sure this is proper. OK, but this isn't what we're after here. So let's do a at records. and Let's try to do our raw SQL for this. Uh, it's not terribly difficult as soon as you get the, the first bit right. And I covered this before in the April Fool's joke video where I did like the worst single page application ever. Uh, and all you want to do is call active record colon colon base dot connection. And then you want to exec underscore query. And then in here you can put whatever you'd like to and it'll be sent to the database. So we can do the same thing we were just doing where we select the title, the content, the created at and the post as a record type. And of course we're doing this from posts. You can then call a union without having that constraint of active record for uh, grabbing the uh, stuff from our comment. But of course, with the comment, we don't have a title because our comment or our post looks like this. Post has a title content created at and we want the record type, right? For the comment, it only has the content created at and the record type. So what we actually have here is something like null content created at record type, or I guess you could even say nil, right? Because it doesn't exist. So what we can do is we can union with the comments and we can just say something, like, oops, uh, select null as title. Comments uh, are going to be from, it's going to be the content, the created at and the comment as record type from, from comments. And you can also do something like this, where in front of each of these, uh, you can do comments dot content comments dot created at uh, if that makes it easier for you to read, uh, we'll leave it like this and see if this works. If it doesn't, we can always change it later. After we have this, we then want to do a inner join on posts on posts.id equals comments.postid. And then the last thing we need to do is a order at or order by created at. We want this to be ASC and the content should be ASC. Because remember, if the created at is the same, we then want to order by the content. So this allows us to do both in a pretty convenient way. If we go ahead and save this, we can then come over to our views and our pages and our homepage. And in our homepage, I'll just go ahead and copy the rest of what I had generated. And we'll just change it a bit because I think I changed this to at records. So in here we have our table with our record type content and created at. And down here we're going to have our at records dot each do record. And then we have our record dot record type content and created at. Pretty simple. You now come over here and refresh and you'll see that we're running into another error where it tells us column reference content is ambiguous. So again, like I said, you can uh, prepend these with a uh, comments dot. So we'll have comments dot content comments dot created that and that should fix the ambiguous reference there. Now what we're going to run into is we don't have a record type and this is where it can get a little bit tricky because you get this far. It feels like it should work, but it doesn't. And if we take a look at the record, we can see exactly why, uh, because this is returning a hash. What we actually want to do is uh, access this not by using like the dot operator, but we want to do something like record and then grab the content for this item. Something like that will give us a uh, give us whatever's in the, the content itself. Now, you can, of course, refactor this to uh, just, you know, be, be using a hash if you want to. What I don't like about this is it kind of just doesn't read right. Like it doesn't look like the rest of everything kind of weird to work with uh, a quick way to fix this is you can actually come into like, let's say your models. I know someone's going to be triggered by this and tell me to go make like a services directory, but nobody cares. You can create like a posts and comments model RB 
You can give it a class of posts uh, and comments. And, and then in here, if I grab the code from the other page, uh, you can just do something like this. You give it a ATTR accessor with the title, the content that created it, and the record type. You give it an initialize, you pass, it, pass in the hash, uh, you tell it the at title is the title, content, created at, and record type. So you can do something like that. Now, if we come into our pages controller, uh, you can do something like a dot map at the end here after we've done everything else, where you map each row to a post and comments dot new, and that will then give you the ability to in your uh, in your view here to call these methods. So now if we come over here and we refresh, uh, oops, this actually needs to be posts and comments. That's my fault. You can come over here, refresh, and now this will work just like you would expect it to. So you can now call dot record type dot content or dot created add on it. And it'll work just like you would done like a regular active record query without any of the other stuff getting in the way. Now, now all of this is fine, but there is an, actually another trick that we can do here if your data is small enough. Now, my understanding is up until a couple thousand records, the solution is gonna be just as performant as this uh, base connection execute query. But if you have a smaller size, uh, what you can actually do here is change this to just be a post.findbySQL, where you call it on the actual model as opposed to what we just had. So let me actually grab this entire thing. I'm gonna paste it down here. I'll comment this one out, and we'll just change this to be a post dot find by SQL. And then we can actually get rid of this map call at the end here, and we can come over here and refresh, and it'll work exactly the same. Now, the reason why this works is because in the, uh, in the actual uh, execute that we were doing previously up here with the base connection execute SQL, this is gonna return a active record result object, which is not the same thing as a active record object. That's why we need to sort of convert it there. This uh, find by SQL here, however, it can be very convenient because it will return uh, a active record model or an active record object uh, rather than a stringified hash. That said, uh, a lot of times this little helper here can be very useful depending on the size of your data. And as you can see, it does save you having to create some of these other uh, workarounds uh, and it just allows you to very quickly throw something together. So I would consider uh, maybe using this. Uh, but anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you found this interesting and helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next video.